Mr. Greenland's podcast. Let's learn facts. Feet on the floor, back straight. Number five, to your plate. Chew with your mouth full, chew with your mouth full. Get your elbows off the table. Hello, everyone. This is Mr. G. Welcome to Family Consumer Science Television. This episode is called the competency assessment. What I will be doing is I will be reading the questions to you. There are, um, there are, we're gonna read the questions to you, the numbers, but I will continue right through them without stopping, okay? These will be, get yourself a piece of lined paper. Put your first and last name on the upper left-hand corner. The next line, the period you are taking the class, and today's date, and right on there, family and consumer science competency questions. Family and consumer science competency questions. Okay, so I'm going to slow my voice down, read the questions to you. I'm assuming that when we're, when you're going back to answer these questions, you will have to listen to this again or just pause it at certain moments. So here we go. This will test our knowledge of family and consumer science. Number one, define family and consumer science. Number two, why is it important to cook all foods at the correct temperature? Number three, when using an internal food thermometer, where... Do you take the temperature of the food? Number four, why can you not use an infrared thermometer to check to see if the internal temperature is correct in your food? Number five, write the correct internal temperature for the following items to assure that it is safe to eat. And this will be number five to 14. What temperature do you think internally these should be at? Number five, poultry. Six, hamburger. Seven, leftovers. Eight, fish. Nine, a whole roast. Ten, vegetables and stuffing. Put the correct temperature next to those. Do you think the safe internal temperature is? Number 11, define the food danger zone. Number 12, what temperature range is the food danger zone? Number 14, cold temperature controlled service foods should be held at what temperature? Number 15, hot, temperatures, hot temperature controlled foods should be held at what temperature? Hot temperature controlled foods at what temperature? Number 16, True or false? When cooling hot foods, the food should pass through the temperature of 135 to 70 degrees within two hours. Number 17. Define a pathogen. Number 18. True or false? When cooking hot foods, it should pass through 130. Oh, on, let me read that again, please. Number 18, true or false? When cooling hot foods, the food should pass through 130 degrees to 41 degrees within six hours. Number 19, define cross contamination. How does it occur? And 
what could be done to avoid it. So that might take a few extra sentences to write that out and explain that. Number 20, what is the food danger zone? Explain it in numbers as well, the range. What is it and what temperature range is the food danger zone? And what is it? <clears throat> Number 21, true or false? Perishable foods cannot be held in the food danger zone for more than how many hours? 22. Foods left out at 90 degrees and above can only be stored there safely for how many hours? Okay. What causes number 23 to 29? What is the cause and source of the following foodborne illnesses? What is the cause of 23? Salmonella, 24, E. coli, 25, the neurovirus, 26, botulism. Mm. 27, trigonosis. 28, shagalia. I hope I pronounced that correctly. S-H-I-G-E-L-L-A. <clears throat> Excuse me. And 29, staph. It's a very long word. I'm not going to try to pronounce it, but it's S-T-E-P-H-Y-L-O-C-O-C-C-U-S. Love the big words. Don't want to stumble through that here right now. Um, so tell me where all those um, where all those food burn illnesses come from. What causes them? Number thirty. We are now going to do measurements. Measurements very important in culinary. All right. Please fill in the measurements for each of the following. Number thirty. Teaspoon. That would be a fraction as well. How many fluid ounces are in a teaspoon? How many fluid ounces are in a tablespoon? Number 32. Two tablespoons equal how many ounces? 33. Four tablespoons equal how many ounces? A fraction as well. 34. Five tablespoons equal how many cups? Five tablespoons equal how many cups? That'll be a fraction form as well. 35. Eight tablespoons. Eight tablespoons equal how many cups? 36. Ten tablespoons equal how many cups? A fraction, as I call the other ones. 37, 12 tablespoons. How many cups is that? And that's a fraction. 38, 16 tablespoons equal how many cups? I'm going to help you on that one. 16 tablespoons, one cup. 39, how many pints are in a quart? We're doing great. We're rolling right along. The immigrant science competencies, let's stay with it. Here we go. Number 40. How many quarts are in a gallon? Now we're going to start talking about proper handling of food. Category 41. At what point of the flow of food during production is the biggest concern? And there's four times during the there's four things during production of food that is the biggest concern. Please list them. 42. What are three things that tells the food handler it is time to sanitize equipment and the tools being used? What's the guideline for a food handler for, to know when that should happen? Those three things. 43. Gloves should be worn at all times during food production. True or false? True, sorry, uh, 44, just trying, to break the, just trying to break it up. True or false? 
You must change your gloves when starting a different task using different foods. 45. What is the difference between clean working surface or sanitary? What's the difference between clean and sanitary? 46. Why shouldn't you use the same cutting board and knife for vegetables, meat, and chicken? Uh, and why shouldn't you use the same cutting board to cut up vegetables, meat, and chicken, and vegetables on the same cutting board? That's a big no-no. Why shouldn't we do that? 47. Why is there a designated hand-washing sink in an institutional kitchen as well as ours? Why do we have a separate sink to wash our hands with? 48. Okay, look around. Uh, if you're in room 109 right now, or if that's your, or wherever you're watching this, where is your designated hand-washing sink? Where is yours and where is ours in the room? 49. What are three things... You can do if a fire breaks out in the kitchen. Three things you, can, you should do safely to put out a small fire. Now we're going to go to ingredients. Ingredients. Describe at least one function for each of the following ingredients. 50. What do eggs do? What's their function? Number 51, salt. 52, baking soda. 53, baking powder. 54, what does flour do? What's flour? What's the function of flour? 55, milk. 56, other liquids that you may put into your foods or baked product or pastries. 57, oil. 58, cream of tartar. What is that? It does something. What does it do? 59, yeast. 60, sugar. Okay. We're going to take a, we're going to take a quick stop right here. We'll be right back. Hello, hello, we're back to Fame and Consumer Science Assessment Questions number 61. We're, okay, here we go. We're going to talk about kitchen terms. 61, define the following. 61, saute. 62, caramelize. 63, al dente. 64, mise en place. 65, Julienne, or Julienne cut a vegetable. 66. Please write down the five mother sauces. 67. What is the ratio between rice and water? The basic ratio of rice to water when making rice. 68. What is the definition of sweet? 69. What is the definition of savory? Number 70. What is a garnish? What is a garnish? 71. What is the main cause of food contamination? What's the main cause of food contamination? 72. When must an employee take off their apron. 73. What should be done with microwave food right when it comes out of the microwave before service? What should you do to it? Or what should you let it do? 
74. You guys are doing great, by the way. Great. Here we go. 74. Why must you wear a brightly colored bandage over, over a cut and then put a glove over it? Why do they want the bandage to be brightly colored? 75. How can a buffet help prevent cross-contamination? What piece of equipment should be hanging at a buffet line? Number 76. Now we're going to be into hazards. These are hazards caused by a uh, kitchen uh, that can happen in the kitchen or anywhere but around foods. Give me an example of these, what these hazards are in, in the kitchen. 76. Biological. 77, environmental. What's an environmental hazard? 78, what is a physical hazard? 79, what is a chemical hazard? Sanitation, okay. 80, 80, what should you do to the first sink before you fill it up with hot, soapy water, what do you got to do to that sink before you put your hot, soapy water in sink number one during your three-tier sink uh, manual washing dishes? 81. What temperature should you have that hot, soapy water in in sink number one when doing dishes? Number Sink number two. Um, true or false, you need to uh, rinse your dishes in the second sink with running water into an empty sink. True or false, that's true. 83, the third sink will be, true or false, to submerge your clean dish into a sanitizing solution. 84, how would you dry these dishes Upside down, air drying sounds very good to me. Got to stop giving you the answers, but you're doing great, can't you? C85. Why is it, why is it accept, what is an acceptable way to have a beverage in the labs, okay? If you said covered with a lid and a straw, that is correct. That is correct. Okay, no open cans. Uh, no open glasses. You got to have that thing sealed up nice and tight. 86. Name two ways that you could thaw food correctly. You got some frozen food. What are two ways you could thaw it correctly? On the counter overnight is not correct. 87. When must a food handler take off his apron? That sounds like a double maybe. But put it down anyways. 88. True or false? True or false? It is okay for a food handler to dry his hands on his apron. Mm, true or false? Uh. 89. List the five steps in hand washing. Okay? I'm sorry. List of five steps in hand washing goes in with number 88. The true or false, a food handler couldn't dry his hands on his apron. And also, a uh, list of five steps in washing your hands. 89. Any area that comes in contact with a food is known as the food contact area. It should be watched closely due to its easy Cross-contamination possibilities. True or false and explain. 90. Research a healthy recipe. Please copy it onto a, 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 separate, a separate piece of paper. And find a healthy recipe on any category of food that you like, 
find it, something that interests you. Name what it is in number 90. Please cite the entire address. Okay? Now, going along with now you found your recipe, 91 question to go along with that. Is this a sweet or savory food item that you chose? And what is the difference between sweet and savory? 92. Is this item that you chose a breakfast, lunch, or dinner, or appetizer, entree, or dessert? What is it? And on 92, why do you consider this meal that you chose healthy? And it should be healthy, according to the guidelines of the question. Why do you consider this food healthy? 93, how many calories does this dish that you are researching now have? 94, what is its flavor profile? What is its flavor profile? Is it crunchy, smooth, tender, crispy, hot, cool? What is its flavor profile, 94? 95. What cooking techniques do you going to use to prepare this meal? From everything from blending, sauteing, whisking, melting, Boiling, boy, there's a lot. There's hundreds and hundreds of different techniques. What techniques are you going to use uh, or would you use if you were to prepare your chosen dish? 96. Name at least three pieces of equipment that you're going to need to make your dish. One would probably be a slotted spoon or some sort of uh, mixing thing dish that you might use. or there's, no, there's plenty of them. Name three pieces of equipment. 97. <clears throat> now, regarding the dish that you made, list the amount of, and put these down in order, and put these right down, okay? What's in your dish? How many carbohydrates are in your dish? How many, how much fat is in your dish? How many nutrients or what kind of nutrients are in your dish? And what sort of vitamins are in your dish? Or any other sort of unique ingredient um, that makes your dish special? Number 98. How many servings will this dish make? Also known as the yield of the uh, product. Or how, many, how, how much time is this going to make? And how long is the total cook time of this dish? 99. Okay. Now, if you have the ability, I want you, you are now going to prepare this dish or upload a picture of it and bring it in for grading, if that what needs to be done. And the questions on 99 now is, did you like the way it came out? What challenges occurred or would occur during the preparation of this dish? If you were to do this dish again, how would you make it healthy? What is the origin of this dish? And what's your overall thoughts about the food that you created? How would you improve on it? Or just going to leave it alone? Is this dish you made, is it expensive? Is it budget friendly? Uh, dish to make and we end it with 100 because you're all about being getting 100 um, and thank you for taking the time to um, uh, enjoy this video 
Um, number 100, what is your dream career? What do you want to do that you would be happy to get up every morning and not go to work per se, but just go out and uh, perhaps earn a, a decent living, something that you enjoy doing? What's your dream career if you could choose anything? And what classes are you taking now to get you experience and will get you ready for the next step of your education to achieve your dream career? For instance, if you wanted to go into host hotel and restaurant management, you would probably take some accounting classes. If you wanted to go into cooking and management, you perhaps might take one of Mr. Greenland's classes. Um, if you wanted to work on cars, you would probably take um, some math classes and some automotive classes. Um, what, and you really gotta, you really gotta utilize what you have available to you to train yourself. You do not have to go um, uh, for an extended period of time to get some certifications to make a good living in your dream career. Some careers do, of course, take a long time to get to as well. Do what you love, love what you do. This is Mr. Greenland, again. Let's fill these out. Okay, let's hand them on in on white line paper. You're fabulous. Be happy. Go family and consumer science. Family and consumer science. Mr. Greenland's podcast. Chew your plate, chew with your mouth full, chew with your mouth full, get your elbows off the table,